Greetings, and welcome to the Thirsty Mage, the podcast where a group of friends get together to have a beer and discuss their favorite RPGs. Tonight we have a special review episode on Diablo 3 Eternal Collection, which releases, or has released depending on when you're listening, November 2nd for the Nintendo Switch. For the past week, myself along with three gentlemen have been up late at night beating on zombies and impaling demons as we make our way through Sanctuary. I am your host David Lloyd, and with me this evening is co-host of the Talk Nintendo podcast and Diablo devotee, Mr. KFC Gibson. Howdy ho, I'm uh, super excited to talk one of my favorite game franchises of all time. And we also have uh, another Diablo fan, new Thirsty Mage regular, Mr. Jordan Rudick. Hi David, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Have you slept much lately? Oh, no, I've been having, having nightmares about uh, <laughs> jumping back into Diablo, uh, put another uh, 20 hours in after the review. Did you just go, you just go ad- to bed at night with your fingers, like, phantom pressing buttons or what? You know what? I actually played mostly, I actually played mostly docked mode and I tr- tried to take breaks by not bringing the Switch into bed with me. I think that's, <laughs> I think that's helped me maintain my sanity, so. <laughs> and finally, we have a, a, a fellow Diablo noob like myself, uh, the owner and reviews editor of Nintendo World Report, Mr. Neil Ronahan. Hey, um, so I have a witch doctor and I can, I can shoot plague bats out of my fingertips I can make a giant toad come out of the ground and eat people and then I have a big zombie that comes out and goes and messes stuff up um, this, this game's cool um, I haven't played Diablo in like 15-20 years so this was uh, this has been a lot of fun that's yeah, been a lot of fun for me it's a, it's first time ever playing a Diablo game so start starting off on number 3 you'll have to work your way backwards The f- going back to number 1 would be rough <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what, like, I, I was looking into a little bit of the history before we even got the review copies in, and I was like, oh, they made so many quality of life features <laughs> in Diablo 3 that, like, once I start playing this, I, I don't think I can ever go back. <laughs> there was some sort of event where they brought, like, they redid, I don't know if it was the entire uh, first game, but, like, a big portion of the first game within Diablo 3, but I I think it was a timed event, and it might come back. Period. I don't know. I don't know the exact deets to it, but yeah, I remember hearing about that too, Casey. I didn't. I, I was probably moved on from the PC version by that time. I only played it kind of uh, right around the the launch. But um, yeah, I heard about that too. That that almost got me back in, just because I was you know really fond memories of playing the first game. But yeah, hopefully they'll bring that back, or you know we'll we'll hear about it again sometime. Yeah, I, I from I did just a quick look on it, and I'm pretty sure it was like a, I guess a timed event. But uh, yeah, hopefully, I mean maybe they'll they'll bust it out again for the Switch version. That'd be pretty cool because Diablo One's pretty great in its own right too. Mm-hmm. And BlizzCon's right around the corner. I think uh, it might be next week or something like that. So I, I think it's it's literally this week. Is that right? Yeah. So we might. Um, yeah. So the, it's the the weekend Diablo Three comes out on Switch. Yeah. I believe. Oh, that's BlizzCon. cool. Well, hope, hopefully we'll hear something about. Uh, the Switch version, or, or whatever's happened with Diablo, I know. I don't know if they have any, because um, there was a there was a press event that I went to a couple weeks ago, and talking to a PR rep from Activision, or I guess Blizzard, I guess Activision Blizzard, is that the name of the company right now? I don't know. Um, a Diablo PR rep uh, made a comment to me about with BlizzCon that like they're I don't think there's going to be any major news. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean there will be no news, like because there's there's been some amiibo chatter. Yeah, as, oh, as we were. I saw I saw that today too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I haven't bought an amiibo in a long time, but that could easily change. We're gonna suck you right back in, Casey. <laughs> I do like about uh, what they're doing at BlizzCon with Diablo three on Switch is they are going to have a Diablo lounge. I like it. No, I like it. <laughs> No, uh, yeah. What does that, yeah, what does yeah, that but mean? It, Neil? Like what's happening in the Diablo uh, Lounge? It's a cool name. Uh, people bringing people bringing their switches and playing Diablo together nice. in like an area during BlizzCon. I could totally see myself going to Pack South or East, which I will be going to both and like sitting down, and be like, "Yo, where the Diablo at?" Yeah, that's a neat feature that unfortunately I don't think any of us got a chance to try. Is the the local wireless play? Um, apparently it's you know just as seamless as the the online or you know all the all the things that we've been doing so uh hopefully get a chance to try that at some point yeah maybe before we get to, too deep into the toxic for Diablo 3 we'll just uh do our traditional if anyone's actually drinking i'm i am on brand right now i'm drinking a beer called devil's reach 
Nice. <laughs> it is uh, from from Cape May Brewing, which uh, they're in South Jersey. Um, it's a it's a very very good Belgian styled ale. Um, but I I didn't even plan this. I was just like, oh, I'll grab a beer, and I was like, oh, this is perfect. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty on brand too for myself here with a nice icy cold <laughs> water. Keep me keep me company on this uh, late evening Monday night. Yeah, I'll go. We'll go. Th- Three for three or four for four, I suppose, in terms of being on brand. Uh, I'm not drinking any alcohol again tonight, uh, but I am drinking some guava juice. So uh, another uh, another fruity uh, beverage for me this week. Well, as usual, Neil, I think uh, you and I are the only ones that are paying for the bartender's uh, kids' college fund. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you guys better tip well. Yeah, right. Oh yeah, I'm I'm drinking uh, the last of my uh, Benedict or Weiss beer. I'm trying to. Ooh. It's the end of it's the end of October. I'm getting my my German uh, beer out of the way, and it's a it's a creamy Bavarian wheat beer. It's it's a blonde. It's like a cloudy blonde, and it's pretty smooth. And it's it's a light five point four though. It's I'm I'm used to the yeah De- Devil's Reach. I think yeah. I, I might after this. I might be just I, I might be a little turnt playing some Diablo before I go to bed. Um, it's yeah. At Devil's Reach is eight point six percent. Wow! <laughs> Have two of those, you'll be like, ready, very good beer. Ready if, to take if, them all on. If you ever find yourself in South Jersey, um, Cape May Brewing is really worth going. I actually went there for the first time last summer, um, and it's a very nice space. Got to support that craft brewing. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty, so maybe we'll just get a, the, get the history of Diablo Three out of the way. It was. Uh, Originally released back on May fifteenth of two thousand and twelve for the P. Let's let's do some Nintendo things here. On May fifteenth, two thousand twelve, the Wii U was born like six months away from launch. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Like not even like oh it had just come out like no like we hadn't even had the E three before it came out. We didn't know what Nintendo Land was when Diablo three came out. This, this is just kind of um, depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't remember and, the Wii U launch at all. Like it just. I. I remember a lot of console launches, especially Nintendo ones. I don't remember the Wii U launch at all. Like just no fanfare. Yeah. And I, and I think if if we're thinking of notable 3DS releases around this time, Kid Icarus Uprising would have come out about a month and a half before the two months mm-hmm. before this. Nice. Yeah, I think Kid Icarus Uprising was March 2012. Um, yeah, yeah, because I remember I was living in Utica. And I remember getting Kid Icarus, uh, but I also remember on May 14th going to Walmart at like 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. for the midnight launch because I wanted to get that collector's edition. I waited like mm, five nice. hours, and I asked those, you guys got the collector's edition, right? They're like, yeah. And um, midnight rolls around, and they didn't have, they're like, oh, wait, no, we don't have any. And I was so angry. And then luckily, <laughs> we went to the other Walmart, and they did have one, Um and it was cool. It was funny because they had like the guy was like had a, a sheet of questions to ask, like related to like Diablo lore. And if you got him right, you like one like, little tchotchke or something. And uh, yeah. I remember like I, I think I went like I missed one of them or two of the questions at the first place because they were sort of obscure. But then the second place, I was just like I just blew through the answers because I knew them all. And the guy's like, man, this guy knows his stuff. But I was so pissed. I was like, oh. But yeah, I didn't well, get it. Um, so. some, I, some other, uh, so, so I, I just, I just quickly looked up Wii games that came out in 2012. Xenoblade Chronicles finally came out on Wii a month before this game came out. A Nintendo game that came out shortly after this was the Pikmin 2 new play control version. Mario Party 9 came out about two months before. Hmm. Um, it's been a lot. I, I guess all I'm going saying is that like Diablo 3 is a six year old game, and yeah. that was a very long time ago. I've actually completely forgotten that after Diablo 3 released on PC, it came a year later in 2013 to PS3 and Xbox 360. I totally forgot about that. I thought it, I thought it skipped those ones and went... I knew it came to PS4 and Xbox, but I, I thought it skipped that uh, previous generation entirely. So, yeah, it's you can play it almost anywhere now. Yeah, so so you guys, you guys were both there day one with Diablo 3? Yep. Yeah, so I, I also went to a midnight launch as well at, at uh, Future Shop. They, they don't exist anymore. I think Best Buy bought them out. Um, same thing, picked up a collector's edition at midnight. I think th- there was definitely a lineup. I don't know how crazy it was. Um, 
and I took you know took the next day off work for sure. I was gonna you know play like twelve hours straight or some <laughs> insane thing like that. Um, but there were a lot of problems uh, actually trying to play the game, right? Uh, In case you will remember this too, I, I think it was at error thirty-seven, or there's some you know uh, terrible online connection uh, or server problems or whatever it was. So th- this error number, error message kept popping up when everyone was trying to log in, and you know the internet was going nuts, like no one could play this game or so few people that could actually get online and play and people were blowing up like the blizzard uh message boards and stuff like that and just trying to figure out what the hell was going on and i, I, I probably end up staying up for a you know a number of hours just clicking like okay try again okay try again just keep trying to log into the game and play and i don't even remember if it if it ended up working at some point in the night i think it did you know, maybe maybe four or five hours after mm-hmm. midnight or something yep. like that. Um, and I played for like an hour, and then I was just, we were so tired from just staying up doing nothing. Uh, a buddy of mine, uh, we both kind of picked up at the same time. We were gonna, you know, run through most of the first half of the game or as much as we could. Uh, but yeah, we we ended up not playing very much at all just because of the uh, uh, that, that uh, damned error message. Yeah, I remember. Um, yeah, I mean. And I should have known better because I'm a World of War player, World of Warcraft player too. So it's like midnight launches whenever they have them are always a problem with everyone trying to log on. But I remember I bought like two 20 ounce Red Bulls. I was like ready. I'm like I am ready to take on Diablo three tonight, you know. And then um, yeah, all that ever you couldn't get on at all. I think I got on around like f- five in the morning, give or take. Yeah, and I th- I, I, <laughs> it was hours after yeah. launch, like it was something insane. And I played for I think like an hour or two, and then I had work at ten in the morning. So then I remember laying down on the couch, just like completely wired, and I was like, God, I wish I didn't drink those Red Bulls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that, you that had to wait, problem. you had to drink them while you played. In retrospect, yeah, I, well, like I said, I guess it was. I should have known better, you know. Blizzard sort of has. We a thought we record. would be playing, but yeah, Casey, you should you should have known. Um, <laughs> the the thing, the funny thing was, and yeah, I don't know if we'd really been thinking about it at that time, but we'd been waiting almost a decade, if I'm not mistaken, for Diablo three to come out, right? It, it, Diablo one and two were about four yeah, or five years apart. Two thousand one, I think Diablo two came out. Maybe right, even two thousand. So yeah. Yeah, it might have been 2000. Yeah, 2000. Yeah, if memory serves me, I think I played, like, my my dabbling with Diablo was I played some Diablo 2, I want to say, in, like, 2002 or 2003. Yeah, because... I'm try- I, I don't remember exactly if it was end of middle school or early high school that I played it. Um, but it was somewhere in that round that, that, like, I think I'd gotten a copy from a friend and was like, oh, I'll best around. This, this is cool. Uh, but I never got super into yeah, it. Yeah, June 29th, 2000. So from June 29th yeah. to September 4th was the longest, like, three and a half or three months or whatever it was for me as a kid waiting for my birthday to get it. I remember I was mm-hmm. like, I'd had yes, dreams. I'd be like, oh, I just want to play it so bad. And Diablo 2 had an expansion, like a sizable one that, you know, like Diablo 3 ended up getting as well that added a couple of uh, character yeah, classes and new act. Yeah. And, you know, that kind of re- rejuvenated or revitalized the game. But, I mean, people were still clamoring for Diablo 3, and it was years and years. And I don't think we got a, a ton of news about it. I think, you know, a is lot it going to happen? Rumors yeah. and, oh, is it going to happen? Isn't it? And then when it finally got announced or, you know, we knew it was coming, yeah, people were super excited, super jacked up about that game because Diablo 2 was just huge. I mean, Diablo 2 has got to be one of the best PC game, you know, ever. I mean, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's something about Blizzard games that just have this crazy longevity to them. You know, people still play the original StarCraft, and then they came out with the remastered version. But StarCraft is, what I, I you know... It's a, probably a, as least a, as old as, as Diablo 2 was, or around that age, you know? I think older. Um, Starcraft. Yeah, I think it is yeah, older, pretty, too. Yeah. Pretty sure that, because I remember playing, like, Brood War and stuff before Diablo 2. Yeah. yeah, no, a ton of that stuff. I'm definitely playing that in, in yeah, let's say, grade 11 or 12, so, like, 17 years ago or something like that. So, you, but, again, people were playing that game for a long time. We were going to internet cafes and playing Diablo 2, playing StarCraft, and... Yeah, just something about games that Blizzard puts out. They just have tons of staying power. Like, fans of those games stick with them. I mean, you could easily... Uh, yeah, I guess to move on, though. But you could easily go on to Diablo 2 servers and still find people playing. Yep, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, Diablo 3 was first announced in 2008, but then it seemed to have gone... Bounced around for a while because I think it went through a lot of art style changes. 
Um, and then finally was shown more in 2011 and got the 2012 release date. But yeah, like, I mean, it's, and, and there was other stuff with Diablo 3's launch that, like, was kind of, uh, poorly received because there, I mean, there was all the, the, not people not being able to play and then the auction, the, the real money oh, auction oh, house yeah. Yeah. that there's they a lot were of trying to put in were basically like, and, and as far as I know, like, I mean, there's been tons of updates to the game. That like I, I I started kind of going down the rabbit hole of like what was this game in 2012? Very it's different. Completely different. It's completely than, different. Than what's yeah. on the Switch right now? Like there's like entire end games and alternate modes and more things to do, new classes. Um, but the real money auction house was this whole thing where you would have gear and then you would sell it for real money, but it just never. It seemed to be very skeezy and not work. You know what? It's because a lot of people in Diablo 2, like, you could just go on eBay and you'd be able to buy things. Um, They used to do uh, pretty much, I guess Diablo has a history of adding stuff because they added, like, rune words and and whatnot into Diablo 2, which weren't in its original release, which is just, like, if you put a certain uh, set of runes into a socketed item, it would, like, sort of create, like, a very special, unique item. And uh, the runes essentially became currency. Like, oh, that that's a high rune. Like, that's worth this, you know? So people would just buy and sell that. So I guess Blizzard was like, well, instead of people going through eBay and doing that, like, why don't we take a cut, you know? But then what that led to was, like, the drops were so poorly randomized. Like, you would get two-handed axes that were, like, high in intellect and, you know, like, it's <laughs> like, well... No one's, you know, and at high in intellect and strength, like, the strength requirement was crazy high, you know? So it's like, well, like, my wizard's never going to be able to use this because, you know, it's like, it was just stupid, you know what I mean? Um, so, ah, it, it really was a very different game. So they got rid of that, and then I felt like that sort of evened out the drops because it wasn't just like, oh, like, there's a million good items flooding the auction house, you know? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, the the situation there with the Realm Reborn, right? Where a game launched, uh, and, and you know, in a lot of ways, it was broken or terrible. It didn't work in some way. You know, it wasn't it wasn't as intended. Uh, and the same thing with Diablo three. It, it almost was killed off and reborn in in the ashes of this uh, real money auction house, right? Uh, I think there were a lot of mea culpas from from Blizzard, you know, where we're, we're going to fix this, we're going to spend time on it, and, you know, kudos to them. They eventually got it to a place, you know, and, and in the meantime kind of ported it all over the place as well, uh, but got it to, you know, a really polished, fun, you know, uh, loot-heavy, but the, the it feels like a balanced game now, you know, you're not constantly thinking oh i'm never getting things for me uh you you are kind of always picking up some loot that's gonna it's gonna help you or something that's gonna make you stronger so yeah even though the game is very very different six years later um they've you know they they've put they, they've made changes meaningful changes what i mean like it, it's a it's a much better game i think uh, uh since uh, since it came out and uh i don't know if we wanted to discuss the, so the port was done by Iron Galaxy. They did it in nine months. I was gonna say they're giving panic, uh, panic attack a run or panic button. Panic button. Excuse me. Yeah. Panic or, button. Um, yeah. I'm having a panic attack. Uh, a run for their money <laughs> here because I mean I guess we'll get mm-hmm. more into this um, how it runs and stuff, but it's pretty amazing <laughs> the job they did. Yeah, they made um, one of the one of the best fighting games of all time, Dive Kick. Iron Galaxy did. Yeah, yeah, and I think if I'm not mistaken, did they do the port of Skyrim as well? For they Switch? did. They did this. They did the port of Skyrim, um, and they've done a lot of other ports. Like they, they do have original games. Um, I know they worked on the Killer Instinct, uh, not the first because the first season was a company that got bought by Amazon. Hmm. Um, but I know like the the second two seasons of Killer Instinct, um, the, okay. the reboot on Xbox One, uh, was was done by Aaron Galaxy. Um, and it looks like they've where I'm now looking at the Wikipedia. They ported Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy to PC. Um, they've worked with Batman Arkham Knight, porting that Borderlands, porting Bioshock Infinite, uh, uh, Destiny to PS3 and 360. Like so, Some they big games. they they are veterans of porting games. Mm-hmm. I wish Bioshock would come to the Switch. That but that's another yeah. Cool. That's a whole maybe game. Iron <laughs> Galaxy can do it. <laughs> and it's also like Iron Galaxy has a history of of uh, working on ports, bring bringing visually and kind of I guess like technically impressive games 
uh, to systems that you think they might not run as well. Like mm -hmm. the Borderlands 2 Vita port, if if memory serves correctly, is very impressive. Um, I think the Destiny PS3 and 360 ports for games that were super ambitious, like they worked fine. Um, and I mean, yeah, I can't I can't speak to all of their ports. Uh, that Skyrim port was real good, and mm -hmm. this Diablo yeah, 3 good. port. Well, they're um, two for two honest, on the Switch. Yeah, on, honestly, I think the Diablo 3 port might be the most impressive port that I've seen on Switch. Yeah, I wanted to say something in my review, uh, you know, just about about the port and you know make some comparisons to other versions. I think that'd be you know a fruitful uh, discussion or comparison to be made. But yeah, you can't you can't even tell it's a port. Like it plays as if it was developed just for the switch it, it feels so good to control and to move and seeing things and there's like it's, there's no there's no hiccups there's no everything is seamless it's just amazing it does feel you know natural or it feels like it, it belongs on the switch you know i know we say that all the time but it really does feel feel great to play no yeah, but i mean like the stuff with the the idea of it's feeling like it was made for the switch and it's not just a port like i, I think that's something that rings true because I mean, like, if if we look at all the games that have come to Switch, like, sometimes you'll be playing a game that you knew was ported, and you'll be like, ah, there was a hitch there. Like, yeah. they probably had some trouble, like, getting Unreal Engine to work or something. Yeah, give them the benefit um, of that. And, like, yeah, yeah. And, I, you, I mean, like, in, in a review, I would probably call it out if it's recurring as a problem. But when I'm playing a game, like, if I, if I see a little issue, it's probably not going to drag me down unless it's mm -hmm. really affecting my time with the game. Um, and with Diablo 3, like, the, the worst I saw was, like, sometimes when i'd load into an area there might be a slight hiccup like that was that was it and that wasn't even regular that was very rare um like it's just so smooth especially uh the four of us playing online like um it's it's probably the smoothest i've seen an online game run on switch yeah i was i i think it's the same for me like i haven't i haven't played a ton of like four player multiplayer but considering how much is happening on the screen how many characters you know enemies and the, the minions that were various minions that were summoning like there's so much happening the screen is so filled with activity and action and there, there's no stutter at all everything is just running like butter it, it's it really is amazing especially when you consider all of the spell animations and there are a lot of like i think it must have been the witch doctor like spewing that green <laughs> vial yeah, all over the screen that was yeah, me and it's just like boom you know and the necromancer with all all of the minions that were following yeah. them and yeah uh the other thing that i was surprised at was how easy it is to get into games like, it's got to be one of the yeah. easiest ways just to connect to friends. Yeah, like it's just boom, 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 you're in. Like, it's... Like, there's some loading, but, like, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But it's... I mean, there's, there's, there's no, there's no in. sending invites. There's no, like, oh, waiting yeah. for party to form and, you know, making a connection stuff. It, it, there's none of that. It just it just happens yeah. almost instantaneously. Yeah, like a little bit of loading, but there's the same loading even when you're playing single player. Mm -hmm. I didn't really notice any more loading because we yeah. were playing online. Well, and they did a yeah. good job on the balancing, too, because when for the video that we have on YouTube now, there was a huge range between the levels. Like, I think Neil was mm -hmm. level 40. Casey and I were level 25, and, and Jordan was level 7. And yeah, I start. I started that session at level 5. I think it ended at, like, 20-something. He, he was getting carried. <laughs> Which was awesome. He, he yeah. was getting rushed. Yeah, I remember we, like, tur <laughs> we started fighting enemies, and you jumped, like, three levels in a minute. <laughs> yeah, the 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 flat like the flash of lightning when you gain level just kept happening over and over again. It was insane. In, in Diablo two, you used to have to pay so much to get that treatment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. And it wasn't like you were because I know like being at the lowest level, you, you could think that maybe you were not like you're just dying like every few seconds while the the you're just kind of feeding off the higher level people but like you were in every every battle like it, so yeah what yeah. what happened was when i when i logged in or when i when i joined the game i got a message on the screen something about um could the game was recognizing that i was significantly lower in level and, and you know equipment and stuff like that compared to you guys so there, there was going to be some kind of uh, either stat boost or or it's, the game was going to compensate or, or scale me up so that I could I, so that I could play with you guys. And I, I don't think I was doing as much damage as you, but I certainly wasn't dying. Like I, I was probably, um, you know, taking a similar amount of damage that you guys were taking, and I and I could still contribute to the game as I leveled up and got you know better equipment as we were playing. So the game has a very clever and subtle way of allowing 
anyone, you know, at, at any difficulty or any uh, any level or, or uh, range of equipment to you can still play with all your buddies. So that's really cool, too. Well, and I think that's going to be very important, too, because it really is set up to be a multiplayer experience mm-hmm. and you can gain levels so quickly you could easily be ahead of different friends or even if you're trying out new classes like going in with a different class maybe you haven't built it up enough and a friend is using a higher class like being able to just connect and and all kind of be on the same plateau to a certain extent uh, Mm -hmm. i think i think is very was really important detail that they got really because yeah it encourages to just like you said like oh i'm not going to start a new character because then i won't be able to play with my friends just to to and especially since the character diversity i mean like more or less playing the you know it's like oh i'm just hitting buttons you know but like the classes all play so differently and then what's super rewarding is how you're just consistently unlocking new abilities and then once you unlock those abilities you unlock runes which alter them in some sort of fashion so it's just like there's a ton of custom customization uh, with leveling up and how you actually play each individual character. So it's nice that you can just jump in with a new character, even if it's 10, 20 levels lower. You know, also on top of, like, the whole... The the fact that it doesn't feel like a port is... And, and especially coming from the PC side of things, is how well the controls work with, like, a standard, like, gaming controller, you know? Um... I'm, I've always played Diablo. Key, I mean, I guess I played a very tiny little bit of the first Diablo on PlayStation One, but I've always played with a, a keyboard and mouse. So um, to to like have the controller was a little weird at first, but it all clicked so quickly, and it was like it just all made sense, especially with like the menuing system and like you know switching your skills and stuff. Um, it just all feels really good. Speaking of controls, I wanted to ask if you guys uh, tried moving your skills to different buttons. Did you? I know that that option unlocks at some point, or the game tells you about it at some point. So uh, maybe maybe when you gain enough skills to do that. But did anyone try that? Uh, yes. Um, well, what I wound up doing is because I like oh God, I forget the the name. Like there's like offensive, <laughs> defensive. Like you 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 basically have them all in different categories initially, yeah. and then I realized that there was like a buff spells that i didn't really use that often in battle mm-hmm. um and probably help me but i'm usually like i like i don't really care about like Screw oh my intelligence is going to be higher i'm like <laughs> no let's let's burn them down um so i realized that yeah i could i could kind of put whatever i wanted you could in theory um like take all of the abilities from like the uh, like where you have like you know four offensive things in in like a set you could just have those be all your attacks. So I have in like one area of the witch doctor, there is uh, the zombie dogs and uh, the the toad that can eat people. Um, and now I have both of those, even though they are in the same category of skills. I, I guess I, one thing I was concerned about was that, you know, maybe if you put, you know, let's say all the all of one category, you took all four or five of those abilities. My, my concern was that maybe you'd run out of uh, mana or whatever your uh you know magic power kind of uh, yeah. uh resources so that's why i that's why i never did it i and i found a good balance having kind of one of each category of the skills because i i would lay a curse on the ground and then i wouldn't have to really worry i wouldn't have to recast it uh it would just sit there and then i you know i do my standard summoning i'd be using my basic attack and um i, I think it is kind of balanced out so that every button on the controller uh, and being assigned to a different type of ability, um, you know, you're you're maybe using them in, in a good sequence or the cooldown. You're able to manage cooldowns well, uh, kind of keeping them all assigned as they are. Um, and I, I, one of the reasons I, I kind of neglected it was it, you actually have to go into the options mode. It's not even in your kind of standard equipment or ability menu. You have to go into the options mode, I believe. Uh, Neil, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, and turn on or turn on elective mode. Is it something like that? Is that right? Um, I just unlocked that at a okay. certain point. Yeah, I did it too. There's there's nothing. It's you just move to the right, and then they just pop up. Okay, okay. Because yeah. I guess that there is an option in the in the kind of game mo- uh, in the game menu where you can turn that off or on. So you don't you don't have to have that ability to move your move your skills around i don't know why you would turn that off but yeah i just it's kind of a funny thing i noticed yeah um but i i like that ability to do that and also uh to your mana point i just had some passive skills that would have like when i'd use it 
when I use one of my abilities, which is like generate yeah. mana. Oh, it's so great. Well, it's, yeah, oh, I my feel God. like with the so sort of base uh, set they set you up with, yeah, it always keeps you sort of in the green as far as your resources go, and like there's not too much cooldown where you got to spam one one or another. But I do like that it's still there to be able to play with, and again, it just opens up the customization and gives you you know lets you play your character how you want to play it you know and i mean that's always been a big thing in diablo is like the like how am i going to plan my character like you know what am i going like what do i want this character to do and you know in in diablo 2 you had to decide right away um you know because there was no going back so it's nice that here it's just as long as you're pretty much not in combat and um i think you can't change it if it's on a cooldown so some of the skills have Longer cooldowns, but nothing too crazy long. So it's, you know, you could literally fight a pack, bounce back out first, like just walk five steps back and then change up every single skill and then go take the next pack on, you know. So it's nice um, to to be able to do that. And it's funny for me, like coming from Diablo 2, like I think if you ask a lot of people who played Diablo 2, they would say Diablo 3 was a, a, a big letdown. I mean, especially early on with the auction house crap. But, like, even, like, now, they would be like, eh, it's no Diablo 2. And, you know, I was always in that camp. Like, I, I really like Diablo 3 a lot, you know. But, like, it was always like, oh, it's not Diablo 2. But I think now that I sort of, I, I'm not 4, 12, 11, uh, 12, 13, 14 years old anymore where I have all day to play games, you know. So I think I, I'm appreciating Diablo 3 more now than I've ever have before. Because it respects your time, and to be able to do things that would take you tens of, you know, 20, 30 hours to do in Diablo 2, you could do on a fly here, you know? Like, you don't need to have four paladins if you want to have four different ways to play. You just have one character, and you could switch them up, you know? Yeah, like, that's that's such a brilliant, brilliant thing to do, because you can kind of, you're encouraged to experiment at all times, and, and I love that. Like that's fun. Yeah, no, and yeah, you're totally you're never locked into your abilities, right? You're not you're not assigning skill points. You're not choosing, you know, which st- if you want to raise your strength or your vitality. You you don't even make those decisions anymore. As you level up, those go up. Um, yeah, scales. When you when you pass level seventy and you start gaining paragon levels, you you assign like very very tiny, uh, you know, skill or or ability. Uh, sorry, st- stat bumps, but they they're, they're almost negligible. Um, it's really, and you, like you said, like you said, Casey, you can change your abilities at any time and you change the ruins associated with them at any time. There's no, there's no like, you know, pain of, Oh, I, I hate this ability. And I've, I've put so much, uh, you know, I've put yeah. points I've into it. I'll never get character. back. There's no regret, right? Yeah. You, you don't feel compelled to start over or something like that, or, or have to meticulously plan like you, like you did in Diablo two. And it's just so funny that like, at one point I was like, that to me was a con and that's why Diablo three wasn't as good, you know? And like I said, now yeah. I think just where I am in my life with, you know, just responsibilities and whatnot, you know, it, it is just so nice to be able to, it's just, it's so much, like I said, it respects your time, you know, and and lets you get in there, um, you can play for 10 minutes and feel like you, you had a good time and, and you made a little progress, you know, and, uh, you know, it's just fun to, to mess around with everything it's got in there. And like I said, it does have a lot, and... You know, you can level up pretty quickly, especially when, um, you know, you can change the difficulty before you get into a match or into a game and, you know, you get extra bonus for certain things. And even within the game when, oh, you killed 20 enemies in a row, you get double experience for that, you know, and and they give fun little, you know, stat or fun little experience bonuses throughout the game for just doing, oh, you destroyed a bunch of things, you know, like you get a little bit more experience for that. Yeah, like, yeah, you used a trap well. Yeah, it, it like, just, like boost. I said, it, 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 it's just fun, you know, like it's dumb fun and you get rewarded for doing dumb fun things. But it's complex enough that you could actually, you could if you wanted, like if you do spend a lot of time playing. You could spend just even like hours just optimizing your character with just even the equipment because there's so much equipment and you can change it in so many ways. And then it's the same with the skills where like certain equipment will re regenerate 
uh, the mana or like I, w- I was the um, the demon hunter so I had hatred and uh, discipline and so like certain crossbows would regenerate it quicker and then other uh, defensive equipment would regenerate health and stuff so just going through all of that and, and there's so much equipment that's picked up along the way <laughs> there the, I had like multiple times where I couldn't even pick up equipment anymore because I had maxed out what I was holding mm, yep so you can just spend tons of time heading back into, like, if you're in Act 1, like Tristam and selling off or, or salvaging equipment and then getting new equipment. Like, y- you could spend tons of hours just doing stuff like that if if that was, you know, Your what you enjoyed. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what the, that's what the post-game is, right? The post-game of Diablo 3 is all about that that kind of optimization and spending time, like, crafting items and doing runs to get specific parts so that you can get just a little bit better. I mean, that's what the end end game is all about right after you finish the story after you're diving into adventure mode and you're thinking okay I, you know what what do i do now it's these kind of incremental upgrades to your equipment and your character that's what you if, if you are you know want to take a deep dive into the game uh, that's what you're going to be doing just right? getting that dps up man well right. and a note on the story when we our first play the first time i played it was with the four like the four of us together in multiplayer casey knew what was going on so he was just going from quest to quest to quest the cut scenes were being skipped and the and the discussions between the characters that were, were being skipped and i'm like i have no idea what's going on but we're killing lots of demons <laughs> yeah i'm having a good time yeah w- yeah. yeah we were we were having fun right like it was so it was so fun we didn't want to stop but, for a second yeah. to, to see yeah, the story it but didn't it's, matter it's funny to go back in like so so after that i went back in on my own and, and started playing through the actual story and as i'm watching and i'm like i didn't miss it i didn't miss much yeah mm. i don't think the story's bad i just think that it's not why i'm playing the game well yeah i think well first off i think if you do want to play the story i would definitely play it single player one time through uh to get the story bits or like you know if you have one other person and you're both sort of on the same page like hey we want to you know see what the story's all about um you know but yeah on when you're playing four players it's like all right let's just let's just rock and roll here um for me the story i like the story a lot i think a lot of it comes from knowing the events that have taken place earlier in the franchise like you know to you guys Deckard Kane is just some old guy you know like oh okay like whatever you know but like I've spent hundreds of hours you know where Deckard Kane was like a big part of you know a game that I've played you know and like having seen like the characters you know from the other games up to this and you know, I don't want to, I mean, I don't know how much spoilers we really want to get into, you know, we're not, I mean, it's a pretty old game, but like... It's a six-year-old game and it happens at the very beginning, yeah, so well, I, think, uh, I think you're okay. Well, I was going to talk about the, the stranger, you know, who fa- the, the fallen star, you know, and like, oh, yeah. like, I don't know if that cut scene at the end, like, meant much to you guys having not played the other ones, but like, to me, like, that is still one of my favorite cut scenes of all time. Because it's like, oh my god, you know, like, how amazing, like, maybe that, I don't know if that resonated with Jordan as much as it did with me, but it was like, to me, that was like the most badass cutscene ever, you know? Yeah, I think so. I just, like, again, I, when I first played Diablo 3, I was probably skipping all the cutscenes. We were just trying to get through the game as fast as we could because we were so starved by that, that poor launch or that, you know, not being able to play at midnight. When we finally got to when we finally got to playing, there was no story at all. There was no story. There was no cutscenes. It was just go go go. You know, make the most of this day off that we have or this weekend off that we have. Something like that. Um, speaking of story and cutscenes and stuff like that, I, I do wish that either that you know this Switch version or any of the versions of Diablo three had some kind of recap. Uh, video or something that you could watch or read to kind of catch really you up cool. on the story. You know, I, I wish they had something like that. I think in the in the press materials or some of the advertising for Diablo three on Switch, um, they're kind of directing you towards this this Diablo website that will c- do that kind of catching up for you. But it would be nice if it were built into the game somehow because I think that the if you if you are have been following the story, it, it actually is a pretty fun and interesting story. Like in the, to see the kind of culmination of it in Diablo three is is satisfying if you've been if you've been paying attention or if you, if you've played the previous game. So it is a little bit of a missed opportunity for them to not kind of you know bring it up or bring bring the previous games stories to the forefront. Well, there's there's a, something close to it, and so 
when we when we were playing we got about halfway through act one on my own i just continued the story to i got pretty close to the end of act one and then we decided to to film a second uh, multiplayer uh, experience and you guys were already on act two so that's that's where we were playing it actually completely messed up what i was doing <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I was no longer in Act 1. Like, when, when I disconnected from everyone, when I tried to go back into my story, I was the story that was basically, okay, where, where we left off is where I am now. So I, I was automatically in Act 2. And I did discover it took some finding, and I couldn't, I can't even tell you off the top of my head how I found it. But there is a spot in the menu where you can actually choose what like so i could re i could go back to act one and i could choose where i wanted to to start the story again yeah i think that's under quests or something uh when you're in the main menu or like before you get into the game yeah yeah so if you if you wanted to go back i mean you have to do the battling and stuff but it it at least puts you back at the point in the story if you wanted to relive it um now the one issue i had with it is is that so I, i was at the I had one node left for Act 1, so I was in the second last node. But the problem is is that there's you have to get through about four dungeons to get to that final boss. And I was already through three when I went to the Act 2. <laughs> and now trying to go back, I'm at the very beginning again. I have to go through all the dungeons again. Mm. And now I'm yeah. looking at it and I'm like, oh, I don't know. If, like... Well, I was going to say, <laughs> welcome to Diablo 3 post-game. Um yeah, I've got news for you, David. It, it doesn't uh, get any wor- or get any better than that. It's, it's your, it's that's like, what you're going to be doing if you keep playing Diablo. Yeah, because essentially you get to the point where it's like, yeah, it's like, I'm looking for loot, you know? So there's a few parts in the game, and I don't know as much in Diablo 3, um, you know, where the, the hot spot to go now is. But, like, in Diablo 2, I could, like, oh, bail runs. It'd just be like, okay, you're going to go to this one waypoint, you're going to just get to the final boss, and you're just going to kill him, and you're going to rinse and repeat and we would literally do that for hours on end. And, it, you know, it was like a 15-minute task, you know, to get to that point and, and finish the boss. And you just do it over and over and over because he had the best chance to drop, you know, a good item or the Mephesto run, you know. It's like, okay, you go there and you just run that same area over and over again. Um, I know they've introduced rifts and stuff in this game, which I think help to, like, break up the, you know, so you're not literally doing the same exact thing over and over again. But, um but yeah, it, it essentially you're going to just be doing similar stuff, <laughs> looking for better items. Yeah, I can talk about that a little bit, Casey, because I, I did dabble with the advent. The adventure mode is where you find the um, uh, bounties and Nephilim rifts. So bounties are kind of individual side quest type missions in each of the five acts, and they're 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 randomized. So when you go in. Uh, you start up a new adventure mode, you select your difficulty, all that stuff. You'll get five bounties in each of the five acts, so 25 bounties in total. When you complete each bounty, you get some you get some loot. When you complete all five bounties in a single act, you talk to Tyrael in the, in the, whatever the town is for that act, and he'll he'll give you like a special, uh, I think it's called Herodric Chest or, or, or something like that. And there's a bunch of... Um, uh, there's some items, but it's mostly recipes for legendary items or recipes for uh, okay. uh, uh, set items. So that's kind of a big part of the post game is getting those recipes, building those items, and um, you know, or at least figuring out uh, you know what kind of sets you want to build and stuff like that. But Casey, in terms of the grinding, it's the Nephilim rifts. It sounds like I was doing some reading and uh, kind of trying those out. Um, you you play the regular Nephilim rift. And hopefully at the end, I think if you're fat, if you do it fast enough uh, and you're lucky, uh, you beat the guardian of the Nephilim Rift and then you get a special, um, some kind of special token or item that lets you do a greater rift. And it's in the greater rift where the best possible loot can be found. Um, and there's something about, uh, you know, how, again, how fast you're beating these rifts, how deep into the rifts you're going, maybe in terms of how how many floors down or what difficulty level you're playing it at, something like that. But yeah, the the postgram is all about getting these recipes, doing the rifts, and the yeah, the rifts are, they're, they're randomized. So they, they could be any dungeon, it could be any color scheme, or there might be uh, different uh, smoke and different enemies, like all different types of enemies can pop up. Um, so it, it keeps it, is, it more it fresh, is nice. Yeah. You're not 
It does, yeah, because you're not fighting Mephisto, you know, a hundred times mm. or, or Diablo a hundred times. You're <laughs> you're always fighting different minions in a different area, and then a different boss opens up at the end. So there is there is more. It still feels kind of grindy, but and, and a little bit re- repetitive. But it it is a little bit more fresh than I would say it uh, would, Diablo Two was. Certainly. It wouldn't be a Diablo game if there wasn't some uh, healthy dose of grinding involved. So. No, I mean, yeah, that, that's a big part of the formula, right? I mean, it's just they, they found a way to make it a little bit more fun, a little bit fresher. Um, and one of the cool things in Adventure Mode, and it's in the base game as well, or uh, the uh, campaign mode, but um, to kind of make the uh, grinding a little bit more palatable or fun is that there's a lot of achievements you can you can unlock. So there's achievements for your character, uh, just your character for your account, but then there's the seasonal achievements, right? The seasonal achievements and leaderboards, and I think the seasons actually is a really great idea. Like, if you want to hop back into Diablo uh, at any time, like maybe next year we all want to play again for a month or something like that, um, and we hop in and it's, an, it's a new season and we've got a new you know, set of achievements, we can roll new characters, but it, it's this way of kind of getting you to keep playing or keep coming back to the game. Um, and, you know, uh, Fortnite has seasons now. I don't know if PUBG does, but this idea of seasonal play in these multiplayer games to get you to keep coming back. Like, you know, League of Legends does this. Uh, a lot of these big online games have a, have devised or come up with this seasonal play to get uh, players to come back or to encourage new players to start again and something like that. So, yeah, there, there definitely is a lot more to the post-game in Diablo 3 uh, than, than in Diablo 2, for sure. Uh, maybe while we're talking about loot, uh, Neil can tell us about how the Ganondorf armor works. Um, yeah, so go into your stash when you start the game, and uh, you have all the Zelda stuff just right there to <laughs> begin chilling. with. Um, yeah, like you can do there, but there was the Triforce, uh, like picture frame, um, for like your your profile. Um, there's the Kuko pet, uh, that just you know just kind of follows you around, picks up gold for you, very kindly bird. Um, and then there's the Amiibo portal. Which, um, so, so I think, uh, well, I guess, yeah, before, before getting to Ganondorf, the Amiibo portal, so you put in the game and you scan an Amiibo, and I, every time I've done it, I just have, like, a bunch of hard enemies spawn, and then I get good loot. Has anybody gotten anything different? I haven't even tried any of the Amiibo yet, to be honest. It, can, it does it work with any random Amiibo? It seems like it. Like, I just happen to have, like... An Isabel amiibo and my uh, Yarn Yoshi amiibo nearby. So those are the two that the I've two used cutest so and far. cuddliest of the amiibo. Yeah, yeah, the two yeah. opposite and, from the <laughs> themes of Diablo, of Diablo yeah. three. And then I I put them in and they just spawn hell. Uh, but like that's it's cool because like as far as once again you know you guys talking about the grind like there's another way to introduce a variant on the grind of here's you know scan an amiibo and you could get a legendary item from that. Yeah, it is kind of funny. I tried a couple. I tried Ganondorf, and I tried um, a Mario one. I think it's the eight, one of the eight bit uh, uh, anniversary ones. Um, and yeah, it just it, if you try it in in a town, it opens up a portal, but nothing can happen because uh, you're in a town. So if you you know go to anywhere else on the map where there's where enemies would normally spawn, uh, it opens up a little portal. And then, yeah, some some uh, high powered uh, high powered group of enemies pop up, and usually yielding pretty good loot if you beat them. Um, the, the kind of frustrating thing or annoying thing is that there's a I think it's 22 hours. There's a 22 hour cooldown on using amiibo, and considering how simple or how basic the functionality, I think it's a really long cooldown. Like if you're just summoning one group of monsters, which you can find just playing the game pretty regularly. It seems an odd restriction to to have, like maybe maybe an hour or something like that. But twenty two hours for such a simple thing is a little weird to me. Yeah, <laughs> I guess we'll see. I mean, when the game actually launches on on Friday around November second, maybe they'll talk more about amiibo functionality, or maybe there's certain amiibo that do certain things. I don't know. But yeah, I guess we'll we'll find. Yeah, out. it seems like that's something that like because once again we we mentioned it earlier that even when I believe when Diablo was Diablo three was announced for Switch. Somebody asked about Amiibo, and they're kind of like, oh, we're not talking about that right now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that does lend lend credence to the fact, like, maybe there is going to be a Diablo Amiibo coming out. Although, like, why wouldn't you advertise that 
before yeah. the game comes out. Especially like, that's when it's what coming I, out so soon. Yeah, like, like I don't know. It, it seems like that might be the thing where maybe they have an, like some At sort Blizzcon. of announcement for that, but mm-hmm. I... Yeah, like I don't know anything for sure. I I don't think my I don't think my hopes are super high for that. Yeah. Um. But but the Ganondorf stuff. So you have uh, the transmog armor, which I mean, as as someone who this is all pretty much new to me, so you can go and depending on your class, you can like make your weapons and armor look look like something it's not. You can transmogrify it. Uh, so Ganondorf is one that works across every class. Uh, what I my rookie mistake that unless you just want to burn in game cash, uh, I don't recommend doing is once I realized about like oh I could get the Ganondorf armor, I spent all of my money to transmogrify my you know like end of Act One gear <laughs> um, into Ganondorf, which was a big mistake because then I I got better ones pretty shortly after that, um, but like. You know, some of the transmogrify stuff is like, you know, it's like 500. I believe that the Ganondorf stuff is like 50,000. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, pretty penny. It's 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 very, really expensive. It's definitely the kind of thing that when you get to the end game and, like, you have an armor set you're going to rock for a while, that's when you break that out. Um, but, I mean, it's neat that it's there. I kind of wish, I kind of wish there was more, like, fun Nintendo stuff in that game. Like, it would have been cooler if there was, like, just, just like, I mean, maybe more Zelda stuff. I mean, that seemed to be what they were going for. Like, like, give me, give me a Master Sword transmog. Give me, give me some, some green tunics. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe a Majora's Mask would be pretty cool. Yeah, um, and maybe that is something... Witch Doctor, that'd be awesome. I was say, actually, online, I see, it must be a mock-up of uh, the green Link tunic with, like, the Ocarina shield. Hy- mm. Hylian shield. Yeah, I believe I believe that was something that they tested that was shown at the because I remember seeing that um, when it was first announced. Uh, it looks and, really cool. <laughs> yeah, it looks really cool. But apparently that was just a test, and like it was in that build, but people weren't supposed to show it. They did mm. anyway. Um, but like, I want to see more stuff like that. A bonus and, at at BlizzCon if they're going to bring it up. You know, like hey, we've got some more fun little goodies. You know. Yeah, um, and like that's that's the thing is uh, I don't know. Well, you you guys played Diablo three. Was there any kind of like costume DLC that came out, or was it all just like kind of they'd have big packs and stuff like Reaper of Souls? Um, I know. Yeah, I mean nice. I know when yeah, really Reaper remember. came out, there was like more armor sets and stuff, but I don't think I don't think so. But I I could be wrong. Like I said, it's like I played a good amount when it first came out, and then I sort of fell to the wayside. Um, and then, like, I dove back in a few, like, for Reaper, and then they had, uh, Ri- was it the Rise of the Necromancer? Or s- yeah, that's that was the, name, the yeah. I, like, I got, I got back in a little bit then, but, uh, I've, I've been on and off with Diablo 3, and not nearly as much as the first two games, but, uh, but yeah, so I don't know exactly, like, in terms of content packs that sort of came out periodically. Like, maybe the, during the, some of the seasons, they might have had some sort of seasonal, armor sets maybe yeah i could see something like that especially considering like casey we were talking about earlier uh the inclusion of the diablo one content that seemingly isn't there anymore you know they they, there's clearly uh you know evidence of maybe temporary things happening or you know small you know cosmetic or small areas being added to the game so yeah maybe maybe in the future we'll get more zelda stuff or more nintendo stuff but yeah it does seem like the zelda themed items are very very minor and you know not very consequential it might have been nice if there were more like maybe like you open a treasure and there's zelda sound effects or um you know the, the ganondorf uh armor that you put on it maybe it changes the sounds or there's a certain um uh, the attacks look different or something like that but it it's purely cosmetic mm-hmm. right there's no yeah. Nothing really to it, you know. What, what we're gonna have to get you boys into the uh, the secret level, the secret uh, what are they, the Wimshi Wimshi Swire or something, Shire or something? I don't know the pony level. Yeah, it's something like that. I, I keep seeing the message. There's no cow level. There's no cow so, level, but there's the, and there isn't, but there's something else like it. So right? yeah, in Diablo two, <laughs> there was the secret cow level, which you know you do it, it did a couple things, and you you go to this one area, and there's just hundreds probably thousands of cows with huge axes yeah 
and, and they're all like moo 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 and like you hear all these cats <laughs> right. and it's just it's it's <laughs> so stupid but it's like a really good source of um uh experience and items and and then there's the cow yeah, king yeah. but uh so in diablo 3 there's something similar it's not the cow level but it's like like you know for the most part like i don't want to say diablo 3 is super dark and gritty because it sort of has a cartoonish look but the themes are essentially dark and and you know mm-hmm. where this is like the complete opposite like you're there's rainbows with clouds and smiley faces um and ponies that attack you and like presents and stuff uh, you can Google it if you want to see it. Um, but, like, again, it's like I think after you beat the game, you go through, like, a set of, like, finding certain items and, like, combining them, and then you unlock uh, the not-secret cow level, you know, or the not-the-cow. I-, I don't know what they call it exactly. Yeah, that's a neat thing about the game, too, is that there are a lot of secret areas and secret quests and, and NPCs and things that you can find after that are really, you know, maybe off the beaten path or you, you won't necessarily find them unless you're really looking or kind of exploring every nook and cranny. So there there are a lot of little secret things to the game that, you know, devoted uh, players will be able to find. Um, you know, I picked up, you know, one, maybe one or two of those items um kind of after I finish the game and uh you know I'd like to go back in and you know open up more of those secret areas. It seems like a really neat uh thing for people who are uh, willing to spend more time with it. Terrific. Well, does uh, anyone have any final thoughts as we wrap up the review episode of Diablo 3? Uh maybe just that last point David in the notes about playing the game alone or playing it with friends. Um, I kind of noted in my review that I, I ran through most of the game. Uh, you know, we pl- the four of us played a couple times, um, made made a little bit of progress in the story. But I ran through most of the game by myself, um, and I, I found playing through the uh, story mode solo was you know it's, it's fun. You know, it's, it's t- really entertaining. You know, uh, the gameplay is is just yeah, you know, it's. Yeah. I can't say anything bad about it. Like you, you, you forget the story because the gameplay is so good. Um, but when you get to the post game, because it's a little bit more repetitive and you're kind of playing similar areas and sim- you have similar goals, I feel like the post game is really a place where you want to be playing with, at least playing with, with other people, uh, especially if you can do it playing with friends. Cause, um, I think that would help make it a little bit more fun as well, or at least, you know, liven it up, make it more fresh if you're playing with other people who have the same goals as you. You know, if you're running the rifts over and over again, uh, or doing bounties, you know, it seems like the kind of thing where you want to be chatting with buddies while you're doing that, you know, and kind of the, the game is, is almost secondary to the uh the conversation or the camaraderie that's happening there so yeah it, it's 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 interesting i think the the post game or the after you've after you put in 15 or 20 hours that the game really not demands or requires but it really benefits even more from playing multiplayer yeah i would definitely agree with that yeah i mean maybe the first time around play or like i said i think you at least owe it to yourself to play through and get the story um, I mean, whether you do that with friends or you do it alone, I mean, I think the best ways to get the story is to sort of be able to go at your own pace alone, and you can sort of learn the character, and it's nice to be able to stop, um, like, oh, I unlocked a new skill, let me go see exactly what that does, you know, where, when, like, last night when we were playing, it's like, oh, I leveled up, like, four or five times, but we were all just rolling, so I didn't even really get to check any of those new skills I unlocked. So, like, that's why I think doing it the first time is sort of beneficial, you know, solo, um, you know, especially the story. If you don't really care about the story at all, you know, then, of course, you know, with friends or, like you said, even random people is going to be more fun, um, you know, jumping on Skype. Or, like I said, we were discussing beforehand, we believe it'll be using the Nintendo Switch app um, once it launches. Yeah, so... You know, whether you go through there, it's definitely a good game to be able to sit back and, like, BS with your friends while playing. It's also, honestly, especially, it'll work well with handheld. Put a, you know, put a movie on, you know, oh, you got the, the football game in the background, you know. It's, like, it's a really good game if you're not paying attention to the story or you've already played through the story and you're just going in there and having fun. It's a good game to be able to multitask with. I'm pretty taken by this game, and... 
I, I as I kind of said earlier, I I hope that I'll have enough time to uh, to get through all five acts and and beat the story, and I could totally see myself running through it with a different character, or a different class. Um, I so how long do the seasons run? Uh, three months, uh, three months, give or take. It, sometimes a little bit more than that, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so the, this this season fifteen will end, uh, kind of just about uh, December, end of December this year. Okay. Yeah. That's kind. That's kind of perfect. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I'll probably, I'll probably keep on going with my witch doctor, um, and then and then figure out a class to play with the next season. Yeah. Yeah, I think that, uh, the, again, the seasons, they, they lend themselves really well because they your seasonal character will become a normal character at the end of the season. So your witch doctor, yeah. who you started as a seasonal character, will transition Scooby to a normal character. Of, not, of course. <laughs> um, and then and then in the next season, season 16, I guess, uh, you know, we'll see if there's any uh, new gameplay elements or, uh, you know, DLC that they've added to the game. But, um, yeah, just, just run through a new character, sure. Yeah, that, that I'm... Like it's a game that's probably going to fade into the background because uh, there's a bajillion games coming out on Switch every week. Yeah, I'm that's trying right. To stay on top of reviews, um, but but it, I think it's a game that will lend itself to being like I I'm just going to hop in and play play a little bit because it's there's like a, a beautiful mindless mindlessness to playing this game where like you kind of like I'm going to go through and tap these buttons and rain hell um and like do some very light exploration and then just raise hell <laughs> if, just if, you're, if you're the type of person yeah i mean if you're the type of person who doesn't buy a lot of games every year you know and you know maybe around the holidays the budget's a little bit thin or something like that this is the kind of game where you can you can download it, you can buy it and you can be playing this game for years and years right there there's just so much you can get so much value out of this game because of the way they the way they've tailored the post game and uh, the seasonal play and all the different characters and the way you can play each character different right you can you can play a necromancer or a witch doctor completely you know maybe ten or twelve different ways based on your build and your loadouts you know so it's yeah there's just so much even though it it is it can be repetitive there's still a lot there's so much freedom to the game to experiment and try new things and to do different things that. Yeah, it's totally like a um, a desert island type game. You know, we can keep coming back to it. Cool. And so we have uh, lots of coverage on the site. So we'll have Jordan's review up at NintendoWorldReport.com. Uh, Neil will also have a second opinion as well to go along with that. We have the video review at NWRTV as well as the multiplayer experience that we have. It's it's up there as well. Uh, no commentary if you. Uh, if you if you just like to watch and uh, <laughs> if you're a voyeur, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so uh, if yeah, if you want to get more information on it, we've got we've got plenty of stuff up on the site. So have at her and and uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you can email me at uh, david at thethirstymage dot com. Uh, you can hit us up on Twitter, send us pics of your character, whatever you want to do. We're happy to hear from you. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be playing. Uh quite a bit as well in the coming days especially around launch so keep an eye out if you want to play yeah exactly yeah yeah i guess hit up hit up david and then maybe yeah i mean it is the kind of thing if we if we have enough people that want to play online like all i'm totally up for getting together with the community and slaying some mofos and yeah the, the way it works with popping in and out too if like you know someone could play for a half hour jumps out someone else fills the hole you know it's uh just keep on going. It's easy peasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's it seems like as I talk to people that I know, um, both uh, you know in real life and on the internet, a lot of people seem like they're going to get this game, and I think it might be a very fun, vibrant multiplayer experience on Switch. All right. Well, I want to thank everyone for listening to our review episode of Diablo Three. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But uh, otherwise, we'll see everyone on the next Thursday Mage. Adios. Bye. Get ready for some Dark Souls. Good night. Yep, that's right. (laughs) Later.